We are going to have a chat this afternoon with Alan McNeil, who is part of the Human Rights and Arts Film Festival. And we thought it would be an interesting opportunity to talk about the potential value that film and visual media more broadly has um, for human rights more broadly, but also particularly uh, one of the things that interests me is the, um, the potential value of human rights within or, or for pushing the cause of the human rights movement. It's certainly for me one of the things that I think about um, first off when I, when I think about film is the impact that it can have on civil society. Mm -hmm. What were your thoughts? Well, I think, yeah, when you talk about how film fits into that broader human rights discussion and how um, people can engage with it, I think it's, maybe I'm biased, I think it's one of the most accessible ways to engage people with human rights. I think story, this the art of storytelling mm. is the best way to engage people in, in things that they just might not uh, know much about or before they get to a level of may maybe doing something about human rights, for example. So I think yeah. um, it plays such a powerful role because it's like an entry point yeah. for a lot of people. And I think it's how most people start on this journey of, yeah. of, I guess, understanding human rights and being involved in the kind of advocacy and protection of human rights. You need to be care. You need to be compassionate. And I think mm. storytelling uh, introduces you to these people that um, y you know you, that you'll never really forget, and it kind of builds on on that on that kind of journey. I think. Um, and so. film is film is so powerful in its effect, and it can cross cultural boundaries. So, so powerfully. Yeah, I think it's uh, also a really inspiring medium. Yeah. So it's the one thing that people can take something from it and, and use that. Um, mm. That sometimes traditional media or where it's really kind of heavy on the on the information, perhaps not the hum, human mm. side of it or the human face to that story. Um, maybe, yeah, that's where kind of traditional media can lack, whereas I think the film or the arts or the kind of engaging storytelling, um, yeah, is, is the way to really cr cross cultural boundaries, in, you know, and, and really talk to an audience that, that can be much broader, perhaps. Than and certainly the important. success of the festival itself, the, the growth in attendance would, would um, reflect that. Have you had mm. particular um, comments from people to that effect? Yeah. Have, have you actually seen that, it, that people are suggesting that they want to become more involved in the, the wider movement? Yeah, look, there's a few uh, really big indications for that. Um, one is around us talking, I guess, uh, I guess, engaging with an audience that wouldn't necessarily engage with human mm. rights. So we try through kind of market research and, and, and festival surveys to ask people if they uh, engage regularly in human rights events or if they attend human rights events regularly and 50% of the audience say no quite yep. consistently. Um, with the growth of the festival, I think we definitely f uh, see our core audience, which would be people that are kind of socially, just have a sense of social justice yep. and want to already, um, you know, our guests the converted, you might call them, um, <laughs> bringing other people yeah, to, to along. Yeah. Um, so that kind of growth, which, you know, brings new people into the festival. Um, but the other part of it would be that we are really passionate about connecting the audience yep. to action or connecting the audience to information, volunteering opportunities, organisations that they can get involved with. So, for example, this year we had a take action postcard you take right. home from the festival. So you, you take that when you... Using, you're using the, the screenings as a platform. Exactly. Really, you know, springboard. Yeah, because you, you're inspired yeah. after the session or you, you've got this really great energy at that moment, yep. so we want to connect people or give them the options. And there's such a, a such a notion of of community itself in the experience of actually mm. seeing the film. So it's it's I something would so. manifest in that way as well. And certainly the speaker component of the yes, festival, exactly. where you have panel yeah. discussions and you get experts in to you know really uh, debrief after the film and pick apart those topics from different perspectives. Mm. People working in the field, or um, and you know hopefully disagree or debate those conversations that the filmmaker, which you know is one perspective on yep. some of these issues, um, you, to have that. Really Really robust discussion. Yeah. Um, I think it makes you also feel part of, of mm. that community or that experience. You've just seen something very exactly. powerful, yeah. and then you've had to, to been able to talk about it. Um, and some of the testimonials in the festival is a really good indication. One of my favourites last year was someone came and said, "Thank you, Haraf. I now know what I want to do with the rest of my life." Wow! <laughs> I just, and I just was like, "That is a highlight." Um, I think for us, where you think it, yeah. it can change. You know, it, it's an it's an extra experience yes. that could lead yes. you in a really great direction. Yeah. For others, it might just be a, a conversation you have with your conservative dad 
after yes, the film. Yes, it's, you know, yes. we've heard testimonies from that saying, I brought my dad along. He didn't even know what the legal system in Africa was like yeah. or, you know, what voting was like for one of and the particular... film in itself, um, there's, an, there's an evidentiary component to film. Um, I'm thinking at one level about uh, the audience perception because, you know, it's, there's so much less of an interpretive component to mm. what you see visually. It's so multi-sensory, mm. um, which at one level can impact, I would imagine, um, your average Joe Blogs on the street in one way. But similarly, I mean, that suggests at least an opportunity um, for the collection, the documentation of human rights abuses. Mm. We know, um, for example, within the human rights um, NGO sector, one of the major challenges that it's had has been, and one of the things that's been recognised, is the importance of being fastidious when it comes to mm. the documenting of abuses, particularly when you're looking at confronting a state uh, itself with Absolutely. these sort of notions. I mean, has it? Mm. Have you seen film being used more and more in that capacity? I mean, certainly um, there's so many films out there, and when we're curating the festival, you, you're choosing from an you know, mm. abundance of film. And you, one thing that always sticks with me is also how long it takes to make to make these yeah. films. You know, these are seven to ten year projects for yeah. so many filmmakers. So completely admirable in that sense as artists. Um, but yeah, I think it's a really good point of the documentation of these abuses. Um, th there's a platform for these stories, uh, whether it's festivals like us, but mm. also just the just media being massive and mm. so much a part of our lives so when you've got a platform for it there's an audience for it mm. and that, that's really important but really it's it's the truth you know you yeah. film when you film it it's the truth it's there it's happened and yeah. that's a really important part of documenting human rights abuses and telling these stories to the world yeah. um, and then raises that really interesting question of you know, comes up a lot but now we know about these things yes. and, yeah. and 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 what are we going to do yeah. about it so you know as time has gone on and now everything is so accessible, it is yes, filmed, yeah. everyone can see it really easily, now what do we do? Because there's mm. no excuse really. <laughs> well, the movement itself has really relied so much on that moral authority. Um, and that's really been, I think, one of its essential powers in affecting state change. And when, as you say, it's, it's, it's so in your face, it's so confronting, and particularly, I think, in this day and age, we're in the last decade really where we've had technology itself not only um, at one level it's made cameras and and capturing equipment a lot cheaper and more accessible but mm. then when you plug that into the the social media sphere which you know I mean people with mobile phones can be there and capture the material mm. and five minutes Certainly. later it's on the web exactly um, I mean one of the things that there's a couple of a couple of, of examples that have have really struck me. One would be the um, the Arab Spring, where mm. journalists were often not able to get access to a mm. lot of the sites that this place was that, that these um, abuses were happening, and you're getting citizen journalism. Definitely. Um, and we, yeah, and I guess we've had some really good films mm. on the on that topic of citizen journalism. Um, one that springs to mind is Words of Witness, which right. looked at, which was uh, followed a young woman, uh, young female journalist, um, aspiring journalist. Her mother thought it was absolutely <laughs> was right. definitely not a good idea, um, but she was she was there f for the duration of the Arab Spring and and basically tracked the whole revolution in the square and was yeah. there interviewing oh, people. Oh yes, I remember that. I'm not one. sure if you've it seen was that. Fantastic. Um, and another one, High Tech Low Life, actually looks at um, censorship in China and yeah. that really focused on bloggers and citizen journalists yeah. and, and, and how, you know, with, with the strict censorship, none of this would get out mm. if it wasn't for the, that ease of technology to be able to, to shoot it on your phone, to mm. get, get, uh, get past the great firewall of China, they called it in yes. the film, well, well, <laughs> to actually post it um, and, and be online. And I guess for what's, what's also really interesting in that conversation when you talk about documenting or your citizen journalism, for us specifically as a festival, we're really, um, what's really important to us is that the films, I guess, are of, I guess, a really high quality, yeah. uh, p very well put together, very well made films in one sense with an extraordinarily powerful story. Mm. Um, which I guess um, is a little bit different to investigative journalism where you can use film yeah. as a platform. So us as a, I guess, arts and film festival, it's really important so that we can reach the masses and reach yeah. everyone. It is about quality, 
but a lot of these say high tech low life was able they're able to do both um, use these examples of people with their phones but turn it into a really powerful film well you're also finding the you know the top end equipment um, mm. that documentary makers are, are employing itself is not only becoming uh, more accessible at a financial level but it's it's becoming so much more compact definitely hidden that, yes <laughs> hidden exactly yeah so well actually the square is a really yeah. fantastic example have you've seen the square no, no, not so yet. It, it was our opening night film last year and it was nominated for an academy award and just tracked you know egypt over the last three or four years from the oh Revolution yes no i have seen it that yeah. was brilliant wasn't it and it the, was. you know the very as soon as it started they just went here is your ca like take yeah. your camera and film everything and I think it's a really good example of the, f in terms of an artistic sense, how the filmmakers then edited together a Academy Award nominated yep. film compared to, you know, you've got an abundance of footage. A lot of it's not, not going to be very good. It's just handheld running around the streets, mm. capturing these things. And I think that's kind of, I guess, interesting for us uh, in an artistic way of, because in a, a film, the way it's edited could be a great film or a mm. not so great film. Um, but certainly that is just completely not, not yep. filmmakers making that film, just the average person on the street. Just but, documenting if, but even what with, with filmmakers, it's so much more accessible for mm. who can become a filmmaker Absolutely. and who can go out into the field and capture and actually yeah. capture that top quality um, material. Yeah. And I think that's why there's so many films to choose from, exactly, from the yeah. program. That, Which you is know, only a good thing, yes. Um, and, and it's inspiring. I, I mean, you know, Five Broken Cameras, mm. set in Palestine. Um, it, it felt like he, the, the Palestinian farmer. He wasn't an, 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 a filmmaker mm. himself, but he knew that what he was filming was really important. And but he I think that's an skills. interesting <laughs> intersection because it's 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 an example where at one level you're getting the citizen journalist, mm. but you're also getting if you see that look at the work for example of um, Bet Salem where they are intentionally taking this cheap mm. um, device and giving it to mm. the local population so they themselves can actually document the abuses. Exactly. And so, yeah, then it's a, it's, it just proves how powerful film can be because you yeah. know it's a record of it. It's there. What you then do with it, I think, is really interesting. Do you yeah. turn it into a more commercial project of a film that you want to go into mm. festivals? Do you try and do it more as an investigative report? Do you submit it to Human Rights Watch and, and make sure something gets done about it and give it to the NGOs like Amnesty? Um, but I think it yeah, just shows how... The fact that you can is. reach different audiences, exactly. though, by the way yeah. that their material is repackaged again. Absolutely. It's that, that emotive, that, yeah. that effect of power of film. It's yeah. And I just, yeah, we, I guess, we can just see that in the cinemas. You've got a packed cinema. Yeah. Um, they're completely all engaged in the story. You get to meet these people on the screen, and then hopefully you get to meet the mm. director, or you have a conversation with them afterwards. Last night... Um, uh, as part of the festival, we had The Beekeeper, which is a really beautiful film about a Kurdish refugee setting, uh, living in, in Switzerland and kind of uh, right. facing a lot of family separation and, and all those um, kind of things. But to have the filmmaker there afterwards and, and just explain that seven-year mm. process and how you get people to open up on film is also a really interesting conversation where these are really intimate thoughts and, and feelings mm. and to have a camera in, in your face how do you build that trust mm. as a filmmaker uh, so certainly they're the most remarkable artists I think I have oh, so much yeah, <laughs> admiration yeah. for filmmakers and the movement I mean the human rights movement in a way has really been one of the real success stories of the last few decades and one of the things that I find fascinating is that in that respect in a lot of ways your audience at the festival is a mirror of that and almost at a professional level I'd be interested you know, how have you seen, have you seen any change in the, in the cross section of the audience? Yeah, it's, it's an interesting one. Um, I think it is tricky. I think we've got quite a diverse audience. Which is only a good thing. Yeah, definitely. Um, and certainly previously it's, I guess, a large percentage, 60, 70% of our audience is maybe under 35. It's quite, quite a young yeah. audience, but the festival's been a, around, say, eight years, yeah. and I think each year it broadens in its scope and its reach because it's certainly not yeah. just young people coming to the well, festival. Yeah, I, people that I, I know that um, started going to it earlier are still going to it. So it's yeah, only, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you're growing your audience, literally. Exactly. <laughs> and we have things like, like other NGOs. You, you know, For example, we have a big gala, which is a very, very different audience to our core film festival audience. Mm. It's a very expensive ticket price and you come and you do auction items and, and all the rest and through those kind of other avenues we bring them into the festival so kind mm. of a different audience that would be our I guess traditional core audience of, of young students or professionals. I mean that's an interesting just to go back to something you said there obviously 
at one level it's a commercial enterprise it has to pay for itself to mm. exist but at the same time in a sense it is part the, the festival is part of it almost is an NGO does does the festival itself see it in that way um, I would hope so in a way yeah I guess yeah we see ourselves as as an arts organization first um, as a not-for-profit arts okay. and as a creative organization yeah. I, that's been really important for us to separate the two as well because we're rather than being human rights organisation mm. first, we're an arts and film festival first. And that's why, I guess, for in terms of the content and the curation of the program, it is about quality. It is about um, programming films that someone that isn't interested in human rights will want to see. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> that's sort of that's kind of the yeah. point. Because you, people that are interested in human rights... Uh, we're not going to have an. We don't really if, need to have an impact on them. It's if great you came to from a fundamentally NGO perspective, mm. it would bring a particular lens to film, whereas I what you're so. suggesting, and in fact, what if you think about it at a pragmatic level, the angle that you guys are taking, really does open up an entire new audience to the human rights movement. Itself. Exactly, and I think hopefully, we th if you think about, well, why do we do it? We mm. want to have an impact. How are you going to have an impact? It's because it's not just the people that care yeah. about human rights, it's everyone else. Yeah. Um, and, you know, there is a commercial aspect of it when you think about the marketing and the branding and the positioning of, of your organisation. It's it's about being really accessible, mm. you know, uh, the, the kind of visuals that we use around it and the, the music and all those mm. kind of things. So people walk on the streets and go, that looks great, and then go, oh, it's human rights. So yeah. <laughs> we tricked them. <laughs> <laughs> great. Yeah. That seems to be working. Oh, well, best of luck to the uh, continuing success of the festival and, and just thank you so much to the festival for everything it's done. Oh, thanks. It's wonderful to partner with Amy. Thank you.